Welcome to this video on the use of cardinalities in databases. My name's Andy Wicks. Cardinalities is one of those Marmite subjects. Some people get it immediately and for others it takes a little longer. And this video is aimed at those people. I'm going to use an explanation that I hope will make it a little clearer, although there are some wrinkles on the way. I'm a teacher and students come and visit me at my desk to ask me questions and sometimes they leave their pens. So let's look at it from the point of view of student and pen. This one pen belongs to that one student. So it seems as if it's a one-to-one -one relationship. But the first problem that people have with this sort of cardinality is that they're not looking at it from both directions. So we've got to look at it from the point of view of the student as well. Can a student have many pens? So one student, many pens. The many takes the precedence. So what we end up with here is a one to many relationship. And that seems to work. But you've also got to think a little more widely. The second problem is the assumptions that you make. In this case, I'm assuming that a pen can only belong to one student. But that isn't necessarily the case. It may be that this pen has been round several students. The question here is, is this a many-to-many -many relationship? Because one student, many pens, one pen, many students. Or are we not particularly bothered about the exact role of the pen here? And we can assume that one pen belongs to one student. Or do we have to provide some sort of database that tracks the movement of pens within a class? So therefore, our assumptions determine what sort of relationship this is. So you have two rules. The first rule is you've got to look at the relationship from both sides. The second rule is that you've got to say what your assumptions are, because what appears as a straightforward one-to-many may be a many-to-many. -many. 